I've been waiting for this projector for a very long time. I've been standing on the sidelines of 3D for quite some time, and this pushed me over the edge. Now, I'm primarily a 2D guy. I need a snag. It's a box cutter. If you use a box cutter and you wonder, like, aren't these things supposed to be the sharpest things on earth? Why are they getting snagged? Yeah, that's what I'm going through right now. It's a knife versus tape. That's just crazy. Okay. Got to go bend. Oh. Oh. All right. Have a box here. Let's see what comes in the box. The manual. Oh, how nice. They were nice enough to stuff the manuals for three different models into one book. I feel so loved, JVC. 45, 55, 65. Okay. Toss that to the side. The remotes. I will probably never touch this. I used Harmony 1100. Universal remotes. There are batteries for the remote. Batteries. The power cable for the JVC. Okay, we might need that. Just, just maybe. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> yeah, I can't hold the camera and do this, or can I? Hmm. Okay. Usually there's a solid piece of styrofoam holding something like this in place. Not this time. I'm still gonna need two hands to take it out of the box, but let's get a sneak peek. Boom, boom. This thing is pretty huge. Oh my gosh, look at this thing. Look at my hand compared to this, this thing. Okay, I'm gonna start marveling at its size. Um, see you in a second. Alright, here we go. JVC DLA RS45, which is the professional version of the JVC DLA X30. Um, this price is significantly reduced, so you don't have a motorized lens cap. You know, do you really need a motorized lens cap? Not really. Um, I'm going to go ahead and integrate it into the equipment rack behind there. Okay, some things to keep in mind for installation purposes. If you're not doing a ceiling mount and you're going to be shelf mounting this the way I've done, you have to take into consideration the size of this projector. It's larger than my last one, which was a Mitsubishi HC7000, which was itself rather large. But this, I'm trying to get a full scope of it. It is very long and very wide. It takes up the you know space of almost the entire rack. And there's just enough space up front for the vents. The vents of the front, I'm not sure why they did this, but the vents shoot air out the front. And then the, the, end, the air intake is in the rear. I would have thought it might have made a little more sense to reverse it or at least have the ability to place fans on both sides and reverse the flow at will depending on setup. But, hey, who am I? I'm no engineer. So, well, actually, no, never mind. But, yeah, so, all right. So this is something to, to keep it on. This is something to keep in mind as far as insulation goes. If you're gonna ceiling mount it in the place of performance, then you don't really have much to worry about. So when you have a tricky situation like mine, you know, where the projector is housed in a separate location than the actual theater room itself, so, you know, an, an issue comes up, which is the 3D emitter, which currently I have um, right there for just testing purposes, but what I'm opting to do because it's, it goes directly over to this uh, drop-down projector. Um, what I'm gonna do is take my trusty hammer drill right here, and I'm gonna drill a hole behind the couch. This couch isn't moving, so I'm gonna have to drill a hole behind the couch because that is just tacky. So I need to go ahead and make the hole 
and then pull the emitter around. It's IR, so range shouldn't be an issue. Pull it around. The cord is 10 feet. And perhaps place it on the second subwoofer or on top of the shelf. I haven't given much thought to it yet as far as where exactly it's going to be positioned. I just know it has to be on this side. So top of the second subwoofer or the actual shelf itself. It's one of those two. That's a real shell, by the way, from Jamaica. Yaman. All right. All right, so this is the temporary emitter. Um, I did run it back into the equipment room. However, the cord is frustratingly short. So, um, yeah, I'm going to have to splice it and extend it. Until then, that's where it's got to be when I want to do 3D. These are the glasses. These are the... I want to say... Oh, here we go. PK AG2B. Um, there have been a lot. <coughs> excuse me. There have been a lot of complaints about this being too small. Um, I wear glasses, and they fit over rather well, so I can see everything. C can you? C can you? Can you? Can you get off there, please? Ah, uh, cats. All right. So um, yeah, they fit over pretty well. No complaints here. The field of vision is a little narrow. I don't have a frame of reference. The larger. Oh, come on. Dawn! Get off there. Yeah, I don't have a frame of reference for uh, larger glasses, so. But these do work if you wear glasses. My glasses are rather wide, and they still fit. So. So I will say the, the JVC DLA RS45 has very impressive light output because I have a light on that is very bright in an adjacent room and the picture still looks great and this is not even a you know this is not even a, a black diamond screen you know and it looks it looks good it looks washable and of course it's better when you flick the lights off you know then it becomes really nice but I just finished watching this movie uh, Battlefield LA and yes this is the projector it is the the picture quality is pristine okay so a couple of things about this uh jvc dla rs45 that you might not know until you until you own one the 2d is excellent the 3d is good the 2d to 3d conversion is abysmal you don't even use that the clear motion drive, that, well, it's it's subjective, but I definitely don't use it. You try it once and you, you turn it off. Um, if you're a gamer, gaming in 3D is exceptional. Uh, played Crisis 2, and I was very impressed. Uh, overall, it's a very impressive projector. Well worth its price tag. Well worth more than its price tag. All right.